She's an award-winning comedian, actor, writer, director, and producer with a hit podcast called Good For You. And now she's returning to Vegas this weekend. Good morning and a warm welcome to Whitney Cummings. Hey. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Doing great. Thanks for joining us this morning. So you have done a lot of shows here in Vegas before. Yes. So what is it about Vegas that just makes it a fun city to perform in? It's such a good question because I keep telling people, like, you don't understand, like, as a comic starting 20 years ago, like, you know, yes, you want a lot of followers on Instagram. Yes, you want your TikTok to go viral. Yes, you want a sitcom. Yes, you want to be in movies. But when I started, like, the sort of top of the top as a comic was to perform in Las Vegas. Like, that was, like, <laughs> the most glamorous thing you can do as a comedian because not only is it Las Vegas and you actually sort of, you know, feel like you're a real entertainer instead of just some weirdo who's telling jokes to drunk people at two in the morning in some basement, it makes it like, feels like legitimate, but also, um, you know, the Vegas crowds are from everywhere. You know, it's like the front row can be half Germans, half people from Pensacola, half people from, and you get them all together and everybody's laughing. And that's when you're like, okay, like I can really bring everybody together. Even the woman in the front row that just puked in her hand and is going to hold it for the rest of the show. <laughs> wow, that's, that's a striking visual, Whitney. Is that something you've experienced before? Twice now in Vegas. <laughs> Twice now in Vegas. I don't know why confetti is uh, all over me. Um, but that happened. And then also it's nice to occasionally do comedy, you know, for every liter literally every generation. Sometimes people will drop their kids off in the front row for me to babysit them while they go play poker. I mean, I've had kids in the show, like, you know, um, you know, so it's always, uh, it's always quite a, quite a journey. With, with, with that in mind, with what you're saying about Vegas, does that make the experience different for you when you perform here? And is the audience different? You know, can people, do people experience something different with you when you perform in Vegas as well? Totally. Totally. totally, yes, because yeah. to me, Vegas is where I can dress up. I, but you know, I've been working on new material. Like, you don't go to Vegas with stuff you've already done. You go with that's where I go to like debut new material. I wear sparkly shoes. Like, I feel like I can be glamorous. People in the audience are all dressed up. I think it's one of the few places that people actually don't just wear pajamas out anymore. Um, I look out at most shows now, people are in Crocs and is that a beekeeper costume? What is everyone wearing? Wow. Vegas, it's like, you know, everyone looks glamorous. They look good, you know. So it's really fun to kind of just go like, okay, you know, comedy can can be glamorous every now and then too. <laughs> and I like to say to people um, who are on the, you know, not sure if they're going to come to the show, if for no other reason, even if you don't think female comedians are funny, I don't talk about politics. It's a safe space for two hours where you'll hear nothing <laughs> about politics. And that's why you attract yeah. beekeepers. Exactly. Right. There's so much <laughs> to see in Vegas. Now, you're a new mom. So how does how has that changed how you tour and perform? Are you bringing the baby to Vegas? <laughs> okay, so I have been on, I don't know, eight or nine dates so far. I have not brought my son, but Vegas, I think I'm going to bring him. And no one seems to approve of it. It doesn't seem, I think, I don't know if Child Services is just going to meet me at the <laughs> Mirage backstage and intercept me. Because I also, I have, if someone can come babysit my child, please meet me backstage. No experience required. Um, you know, I'm bringing him. We're going to come in the day before. There's this escape room that I want to do. I don't think I should bring him to the escape room. Even I know that. Even well, I we, know that. You know, our, our exec producer, uh, Teresa, in our ear right now is like, she's volunteering herself as tribute to be your babysitter <laughs> yeah. if you need any help backstage, okay. anything needing done. Go. Can is she that, breastfeed him? I, I, I don't, uh, there's no answer from the booth, yeah, so we, I don't know if we, that's the case. We stopped hearing responses after that one. We can, <laughs> we can, we can talk yeah. rates afterwards. Yeah. HR yeah. just pulled her away. Yeah. <laughs> like a game. Yeah. Um, so I'm bringing him, you know, so it should be, if you see someone, you know, uh, if you see a baby pushing me in a stroller, that's me and my son. Well, I mean, you've got the baby now as well. And, and we've mentioned your podcast, your really successful podcast. I mean, you're also on, on hit TV shows, in movies, you're constantly busy and working. So is there any other projects in the pipeline that you could share with us here on Morning Blend? Oh gosh, can I, can I? Well, I mean, my tour is the most important thing to me. You know, as the last couple of years you've seen, 
you know, in our business, you know, a lot of the networks have gone away, you know, a lot of, you know, there was a strike, there was a pandemic, you know, to me, live comedy is the thing that I love the most. And we're in a place where I think people, people want to be outraged again. They want to be shocked again. They want to be surprised again. I mean, the Tom Brady roast did so well, you know, I think that was how we were, comics were like, oh, comedy's back. You know, there was a couple of years where comics were getting canceled for jokes from 20 years ago and old tweets and stuff like that, you know? So, um, so I'm just really excited to be doing stand-up comedy right now uh, at a time where the TV business and the movie business is a little a little wild, but I am going to be um, uh, doing a new television show. I am working on a couple movies, um, you know, that hopefully I'll be able to uh, share with you guys. Like, Exciting. Next, yeah. Well, you're year. you're going to be out here. I mean, you're going to be so busy with the tour, but is there anything that you really like doing in, when you're here in Vegas? Oh, my God. Okay. So I uh, am going to go to this escape room. You're obsessed you know, with this escape room. Have you got a discount code or something? Okay, <laughs> promo code Whitney. Uh, this is my new business. I've invested in it. Um, I've never done an escape room before, but I mean, I have auditioned for Harvey Weinstein. Same thing. Oh. But I, <laughs> oh. I've never done it before. And Joe Rogan is a friend of mine. He was posting about this escape room in Vegas. It's like the It escape room or something. Oh, the It yeah. one. Yeah. Oh my god. Terrifying. Oh, so do you like scary and horror things? I, I mean, look, I want to be able to relate to my child, so I might just need to piss my pants every now and then just so that we can, you know, be on the same page. I Not usually, but it's Vegas. Like, whenever I go to Vegas, I do things I wouldn't do in any other place. Well, like, that's, ah, why, yeah. that's why it's that's Vegas. Why it's <laughs> Winnie, well, we, we wish we had more time. We've gone from everything from beekeepers to front row vomiting to babies and breastfeeding, and uh, we appreciate you, and we look forward to seeing you this weekend, so thank you. I cannot wait. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great fourth. Happy, happy fourth. Happy fourth. Thanks, to, thanks to you. To grab those tickets for Whitney's uh, coming Sunday performance, be sure to visit Ticketmaster.com.